Looks like we're live. Oh, are we already? Good morning. Yeah. How Good morning. Are you? How's it going? I'm okay. Good morning. Good morning, Jarvis. Good morning. All right, comrades and friends, we're sitting here with uh, Scott and I and Jarvis Tyner, and we are here to talk about the 100th anniversary of the Communist Party. We're 100 years old. Uh, uh, That's right. When's our birthday? September 1. September 1 will be this year this year but we'll be celebrating it before or have we started already yes in fact uh, we're going to have a african-american history and women's history uh, event here at the new york office that's right on march the 8th march the 8th and we're going to start that celebration there because of the great history of our party and the fight for equality, both gender and race. And Robin Kelly, the uh, and we uh, have the, We have the honor of having great scholar, historian Robin, Robin Kelly, and we also have an, another a great uh, scholar and uh, uh, anthropologist, Leith Mullins, who will right, speak right, on right. that. Wow. Yeah. There's, some, uh, there's some big names. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'll be speaking as well, and we'll have a rich cultural uh, program so everybody stay tuned for the March 8th Women's uh, and African-American History Month event. It will be also broadcast live here on Facebook. So Jarvis, um, in your mind, uh, in terms of the history of the party, briefly, what, what um, stands out uh, to you in terms of uh, that history and its relevance for the struggles uh, today? I, I think I think the party was not just a party of words and brilliant analysis, mm. which they had. Throughout its history, it's been a party of action. Party and of you, deeds. That's right, deeds. Mm. And that's how people identified with the party and overcame what whatever uh, fears they might have about the name. They overcame that uh, by seeing what the party did, what its deeds were, and the organization of industrial workers the fight to save the Scottsboro Boys, mm. all the way up to um, the civil rights movement in, in the 60s and the help the, the party supported that effort very much. So the big march in 63, we helped that uh, in, in a very significant way. Uh, we also were able to win the freedom of Angela Davis. We played a big role in the fight against the war in Vietnam. And uh, at times, uh, I think our analysis was turning point for the peace movement here and the Vietnamese appreciate that very much. We talked to them. They will tell you what, what you I went did. there, didn't you? I went time? there. Okay. I went there during the war and was bombed on by uh, President Richard Nixon. Wow. <laughs> in Hanoi and ran for my life. <laughs> That's what I felt like. But they said, don't worry, comrades, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, Jarvis, a lot of times, you know, when you talk about the history of the party, Sometimes you get the impression that it ended in the, uh, in the 60s or 70s after mm. the fight to free Angela Day. What did we do in the 70s, 80s, 90s? Uh, what, what kinds of struggles were we involved in? Right, well, uh, I think of great significance was the, the fight against apartheid South Africa. Wow. We were the first party group, or first group, to raise the issue of isolating the races by boycotting South Africa. and. Let me tell you, that came from the South African comrades who said, you want to help us fight, get the Americans, get the American government to boycott and the American people to boycott South Africa and apartheid. So that was a fight for comprehensive mandatory sanctions. That's right. And that was the broadest expression of that movement at the time. Uh, but more than that, we had um, uh, Oliver Tombo. We, you know, we were good, good friends, good comrades with them. We had, uh, who was the guy who was the general secretary then? Um, Moses Moses Mabita came Mabita. to New York and spoke in Harlem. Oh man, what a wonderful uh, comrade he was, and what a wonderful uh, fighter! And uh, all of that. That we this was this was how we were adding and deepening this thing. And then of course the relationship with Cuba, solidarity with Cuba was a, bi a big thing during then. And when Reagan launched his uh, uh, many-sided attack on the labor movement, Patco, Patco. Mm. 1980, soon after Peco supported him, and soon after <laughs> the election, he tried to destroy him, Mr. Reagan. Union, right? Yeah. But um, what happened was also 
this whole movement that established a solidarity that came from the rank and file. Mm. We had an organization called Trade Unions for Action and Democracy, which is uh, across the country. And it was able to, to influence the idea of a massive marches on Washington wow. and for in solidarity mm. in light of this president who was at war with the labor movement. And as you know, nearly a million came uh, once or twice. I think it was three times even. Right. Uh, nearly a million showed up in Washington. It was big marches. Yeah, and it was transitional. We were playing a big role uh, in that respect. And that was the end of Lang Kirkland's leadership. I Lang Kirkland um, had to go. <laughs> <laughs> and it set the stage for um, Sweeney to come in. And then, of course, uh, the current head. Uh, Trumka. Trumka, mm -hmm. right. Okay. What's sort of emerging, Jarvis, from some of what you're saying is, I think a lot of people have the impression that we're somehow like this uh, sort of, you know, fringe or, or um, uh, movement or something that's not, you know, really part of American political life. But that's that's anti-communism talking. Like yeah. one of the things that that we look forward to doing, I think, this centennial year is. Kind of bringing attention to the really important role that we that we've played, kind of in the mainstream of, of political life. Right. Um, people can you give some other examples of that? Yeah, people before profit. That was our slogan, and it became a broad one. Some people did modifications of it, but essentially, it focused on capitalist profits and capitalist power of the ruling class. With that, that was the problem that we were up against. We put that slogan out. Uh, I think it came out of Detroit. Uh, Tommy Dennis was the first one, our first person I heard. Is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. African American head of the party in Michigan. Okay. He was the first person that he was running for Senate, I think. In that party had deep roots in Detroit. Coleman Young. Coleman Young. All those kinds of guys, right? Yeah, uh, wonderful. UAW. The Road. Strike. That's right. And all of that. I won there in a couple of weeks, actually. You're going to be speaking there. Mm -hmm. oh, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Do you on. think, Jarvis, that anti-communism is, and with this Trump is, today, is growing or is it lessening? You heard that speech that Trump gave the State of the Union in which he said, the United States will never, ever be a socialist country. Uh, well, he's he's got a loud megaphone and he's making the issue wider. But the, actually, the polls show that the American people are actually shifting towards a more positive attitude towards communism and socialism. I, I don't separate what the socialist victories you know, when a, when a candidate like uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says that she's a worker, that's why we ran in 1970s and 80s. When Angela ran, when I ran in uh, 72, 76 with Gus and our other candidates, we put two workers in the White House, we said, mm -hmm. and then starts to lay out an economic program favorable to the working class. I mean, that's a, that's a stuff we can support and we will and we have. And we, we are supporting uh, supporting this. But that's where the American people are. And you saw at the State of the Union <laughs> when they carried out this cheering, applauding protest against Trump. Mm -hmm. This is where we're moving. And socialists, to call for socialism now, no. It's not realistic to win it, but socialist measures are needed now to meet the crisis that the American people face. It. And that's what I think a lot of the... Uh, what, what, what our party's talking about and what uh, Ocasio... Can we advance if we fear to advance towards socialism? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So he's panicked. Oh. And, and on, that, on that end of things, um, you know, big news yesterday that, that Amazon has withdrawn its plan for a headquarters in, in New York um, because of the, you know, uh, the growing consciousness that the the ruling class are not, you know, heroic saviors and job creators. They're actually parasites um, that are hurting us. And I, I think that's without the, the electoral victory in November that changed the composition of Congress so much, um, I don't think we would have seen that happening right. um, with Amazon in particular. Right. There would have been an overwhelming, oh, wonderful, Amazon's coming. And Amazon had a deal where they would, a billion dollar company, wealthiest country, company out there had a deal where they would in fact get billions to come in and make more yeah. billions. Yep. There's no guarantee that if the jobs didn't happen, they should talk about 50,000, it wasn't 50. I think it was something like 7,000 maybe initially. 
and they mm -hmm. hoped in 10 years it'd be 25,000, and they hoped and so forth, and so they hoped, hoped, which turned out to be a little bit of a con job because if they don't reach that, are they going to give us back the taxes huh. they didn't pay? Huh. No. So this so, is so what? what it is. $25 billion the state of New York offered them in like no strings attached uh, nonsense. And the polls actually showed that on the issue of them coming in, there was 56%. But on other issues like tax breaks, infrastructure, we were going to give them all kinds of things. We were going to, yep. There were not a majority on it. There were a lot of opposition to it. Okay. When learned that. They said, well, we're not going. And then union rights and all that. So the point is that there's an, after this last, last election, there's a new framework for a struggle. The relationship of right. political forces in the country have, have changed a little bit, no? Right. So, um, and that creates, you know, I, do you think that there's a trend in the discussion now that the, uh, that the Democratic Party and some of the new uh, politicians are going too far? And it, if you go too far, it means that you, uh, you're you you're kind of strengthening the right, you know, and Trump's popularity in a new Gallup poll went up. And uh, and uh, so the the smart thing to do is is to be walk in the middle of the road and, <laughs> and uh, not put forward these progressive measures and uh, in order to win the center. What do you think yeah. about that? Well, uh. What's the name? Hightower down in Texas once said that the only thing in the middle of the road are dead armadillos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I and I think he's right, but we would have never gotten New Deal. Never with that attitude. Never been able to organize industrial workers, never gotten a social security, Medicaid, and all that. Right. These left struck the, the people who are pushing for a more advanced program, who are more principled. Uh, committed to the interests of working people, these are the people that keep this thing going. Right. And King said, you know, the arc of humanity leans towards social justice. Well, these are the arc builders, the benders, they're the pushers, they're the leading people, the young people, the workers, and so forth, the common people who, in fact, get out there and express their political muscle. They make things seem so don't, don't listen to this notion. Of course, the right wing is going to be disturbed because they're getting defeated. They're going, to be, right. they're, they're going down. Right. Their policies are bankrupt. The rich get richer, rich get richer, rich get richer, and guess what? We got poor. No doubt about that. So we'll be taking up a lot of these issues at our 31st convention in Chicago in June, and there's going to be an event. Um, what kinds of things do we have planned for the 100th anniversary? Well, uh, first of all, <clears throat> at the convention, the Saturday night uh, big uh, rally and everything will be around the 100th uh, anniversary, the centennial of the Communist Party. It was like, how the Communist Party lasts 100 years? <laughs> lasts 100 years because it fought for the interests of the working people, the racially oppressed women, so forth and so on. And that gave it a steel, the kind of political backbone that with all the attacks it confronted, including the jailing of its leaders, and, um, the attacks on the Communist Party in every way possible way. That helped them overcome it. And that's, we're going to celebrate that. We're going to have films and uh, culture, and we're going to uh, sing the old songs, some of them, and sing some new songs. Mm. <laughs> There's a lot of songs out there with a communist message people don't, they don't, don't know about. They come in all forms, R&D, rock and roll, classical music even. Hip hop. Hip hop. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely hip hop. So we're going to try to make this kind of a festival and uplift people as we go forward. That's in the convention. And then in September 1st, that around that weekend, we're not sure we can do it every, we're going to have regional rallies, East Coast, Midwest, West Coast, possibly the South. Right. To celebrate the centennial of the Communist Party. Well, we invite all of our viewers to uh, participate in that event. It will also be streamed online. And by the way, before we close, we want to ask all of our comrades who are watching to get in your ten dollar convention <laughs> assessment fees. Have you sent in your ten dollar fee? Yes, yet? sir. You have. Okay. What about you, Scott? Uh, yeah. Huh? No, really? no, 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 no. He's hesitating. <laughs> I haven't sent in mine. You want to borrow 10 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> it's really important. So please uh, get in your $10 uh, 
assessment, you can go to our website, uh, cpusa.org, right on the top in the right hand side, it says member assessment. You can click on it and boom, it'll take you uh, to the page. Well, Jarvis, uh, thank you so much for joining with us uh, this morning. Uh, and uh, we'll have to have you back. Thank you. Indeed. My pleasure. Thank you guys very much. All Tom right. Rice. Appreciate Good to see you. It. Good to see Take you. Take care. Tom. And uh, we will see you uh, on March 8th. And uh, we also hope very much to see you in uh, Chicago. Uh, oh, hmm. and uh, this weekend as well, uh, Sunday evening, 6 p.m., oh, uh, right. there is the first uh, pre convention discussion seminar. Uh, oh. online on class and democratic struggles. Wow. Uh, so um, please join us for that. It's um, uh, a forum for discussing the new draft program of the party. Wow, okay, great. So we got to publicize that a little bit between now and, uh, and uh, Sunday. All right, so we'll see you Sunday. We'll see you March 8th, and then we will see you in Chicago. Take care. Take care. Good night. Care. Not good night, good afternoon. <laughs> see ya. All right, take care.